Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Humphrey, thank you for being here. I make TikTok videos in personal finance and today I wanted to bring you a video of all the things that you need to do before you get to college to take control of your financial life. So the first step that I think that every student should really have is a bank account. And the reason why you want your own bank account is simple. You want to be independent and have a good sense of where your money is coming in from and where it's going out. Having your own bank account and not being tied to your parents' bank account is going to make you more independent and it's going to give you a lot more responsibility when it comes to your own personal finances. You want to choose a bank account that has branches on your campus and has probably low ATM fees because when you're pulling out money out of an ATM, the last thing you want to do is get a $3 fee because you're not part of some sort of ATM network that another bank is a part of. I do know that with Charles Schwab, you could actually get an ATM card that has no transaction fees at any ATM, so that's a good option. But in general, the bank account that you're gonna choose is highly dependent on what branches are in your university town, so I would just recommend doing some research ahead of time before you even get there to figure out, okay, which bank account do I wanna open an account at? Now, if you're over the age of 18, you can do it on your own, but if you're under the age of 18 when you enter college, like I was, what you will need is probably to either wait till you're 18 or you can open up a joint account with your parents to begin with. After you get your bank account, what's really important when you're young is to start to establish credit. And to do that, first of all, you would need the bank account to begin with, but also secondly, once you have that bank account, you can start to apply for what's called a secured credit card. So a real quick primer on what credit is. Basically credit is just basically how likely you are to repay your debt to a lender. Let's say you borrow $100 from your friend and you pay it back 99.99% of the time, your credit worthiness with your friend is pretty good. Like your friend's gonna trust that you're gonna give him the $100 back at the end of you know a certain period of time. The same thing works with institutions and places where you loan money from, such as an auto loan or a student loan. They wanna know how likely are you to repay that money? And that's what a credit score is. So how do you establish credit when you have no credit at all? Well, one of the ways is called a secured credit card. A secured credit card is basically the same thing as a regular credit card. However, you have to put up some money as collateral before they give you the credit card. This is to ensure that if you do default, which means if you don't pay your credit card, that they have some money to kind of use to pay off your debt that you accrue on your credit card. Now, with a secured credit card, it's really important to pay off your debts in full and use it for about six to 12 months before you start to apply for a normal credit card. You wanna show that you're trustworthy enough for six to 12 months and that you're likely to pay back your debts on your secured credit card so that you can start to apply for a normal credit card which has better benefits and typically a higher credit limit. There are a lot of benefits to having better credit in the long run, and one of them is when you apply for a mortgage or an auto loan, they're gonna look at your credit score to figure out you know, how much they can actually loan you and at what interest rate they can loan it to you at. So what I'm gonna do now is put on the screen, probably like right here if I can do it, uh, what the best secured credit cards are out there or the websites that you can use to check out the different secured credit cards there are out there. I've heard really good things about the Discover It secured credit card, and now this is not advice by any means, but this is just my opinion. I think it's a pretty good card to get started. So this brings me to my next point, which is number three, which is to figure out what you spend your money on. It's kind of gonna be pretty tough for you to figure out what you spend your money on before you even get to college, but try to analyze what you like to spend money on, such as eating out, or maybe it's a shopping habit, and set budgets for yourself. In college, you might have some unexpected expenses, such as if you join a fraternity or sorority, they have dues that are due every semester, and they could actually add up quite a bit. So it's really good to know how much you spend on a normal basis so that you can budget for things that you wanna do, like join a sorority or a fraternity. Other unexpected expenses in college are the cost of textbooks. Obviously, textbooks are really expensive these days, and there are different alternatives to get around how expensive the new ones are. You could buy used ones online. You could borrow some from upperclassmen. Perhaps they're getting rid of theirs. Usually schools will have some sort of in-school in network where upperclassmen can sell 
lower classmen or freshmen their old textbooks. So I would encourage you guys to even track your expenses. I track my own expenses with an Excel spreadsheet. There are a lot of great apps out there like Truebill, Mint.com, and I like to use Spending Tracker, which is on the App Store. I'll link my spreadsheet for budgeting in the description below, so you'll be able to check it out right there. That spreadsheet is really granular, so if you wanna adjust it for how you like it, you can definitely do so. It is just what I personally like to use. One of the best things that you can do when you're young is to start your own investment account. And what you need to start an investment account and to buy stocks or equities is you need a special type of account called a brokerage account. And a brokerage account is offered by firms such as like Robinhood is one of the easiest ones to get signed up with, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab. There are a couple other ones, but those are just the ones that I would personally look to just because they're the most popular on the market. So once you have one, what do you actually invest in? Well, that could be a really long video in and of itself, but basically everyone's investments are gonna be different depending on their situation and their risk tolerance and what their objectives are. I will say, however, if you're contributing to your investment account regularly at a regular interval over time, you'll be way better off than the person who's not because your gains and returns are gonna be compounded over time. And the earlier that you start, the more financially stable you're gonna be as you grow older. I personally have an investment account at Robinhood and Vanguard.com, and I think those two are the easiest to use. If you're interested in Robinhood, you can check out my link in the description below. I think you get a free stock if you sign up using my referral code, which you don't have to do it, but you know if you want to, it's right there. The fifth thing I would do before I got to college was to research the type of jobs or side jobs that I would be interested in doing when I got to college. Now, not everyone is going to need a job while they're in college, but if you would like to get a job, it's good to research it ahead of time so that when you do show up to campus on day one, you know exactly what to do and exactly who to talk to and exactly where to go if you are looking for that income. I would start by looking at your college's bulletin board or if they have any in-network websites where they have a job board, that would be pretty good. I would also look at Craigslist in that university town that you might be in, or I would look at different job sites for a side job or maybe a part-time job while you can do attending college. The most important thing here is to build skills for the long run and to try a variety of jobs over your college experience so that when you get out of college, you have more of an idea of what you like to do or what you're more better at. Not everybody is good at everything, so it's great to try a variety of things and to kind of hone in on what makes you unique and what makes you interested in doing the type of work that you like to do. So college is all about experimentation and trying different things. I would say if you find a job that doesn't feel like work to you, or maybe it feels like 80% of it is not work and then 20% is you know, an administrative task or something that you don't wanna do, that's pretty good. A lot of people can't find that, especially in college. And I think that as long as you keep trying a variety of things, you're gonna get to what feels like not work to you. So the more that it doesn't feel like work to you, the better I think it is. Like for example, for me, Shooting this YouTube video doesn't feel like work to me, and I actually like enjoy this part. So I think I really like content creation, and I'm gonna keep doing it for as long as I can, and I hope that you guys enjoy these videos. But that's just my advice to you. I'm 32 now, and I, these are all the things that I wish that I could do, or that I wish I could tell myself when I was younger. I even have a little sister, she's 17, she's about to go into her freshman year of college, and shout out Wendy. I kind of wanted to make this video for her as well. So to sum up, I think that all of these steps that you could take before you get to college will really give you a good starting point and a good foundation and a good springboard to even progress your personal financial life even further. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I know it takes a lot to subscribe to a new channel these days, but I'm gonna to try to continue to put out great content for you guys and be engaged in the comments as well. So if you have any video ideas that you'd like to see me do, please leave them in the comments and I'll reply to them and I'll even consider them for my next video. All right guys, so that was the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you're about to enter college, I hope that these tips really helped you. And if you're a young adult and you haven't done these already, I hope that you pursue them as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.